talking about straining for that logo on the side of your helmet and not the name on your back. Yes, sir. Yes, because sir. we know what it represents. It represents everybody here you see yes, and everybody you can't that we've talked about. I'm here to strain with you, man. I swear to God I'm here to strain with you. Let's go. Everything you got, strain with everything you got. Let's go. Let's go. Bills on three. One, two, three. Bills. You're listening to the Off Tackle with John Fetus Show with your host, Joe Miller. Well, what is going on, everybody? Welcome. Welcome, Bills Mafia, into the Off Tackle with John Fetus Show, brought to you by the Market Dominator team on the Buffalo Rumblings Vidcast Network, presented by Picasso's Pizza. Treat yourself to the most flavorful pizza on game day, Picasso's. We are Buffalo Pizza, shipping local and nationwide. Order online at picassospizza.net. I am the host of this year Off Tackle with John Fetus Show. My name is Joe Miller. You can find me on Twitter at Joe Miller Wired, and sitting right there next to me is the star of the show, Former offensive tackle for the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> the, the slow draw. John Fina himself. John, how are you doing? How was your Christmas real quick? Hey, Christmas was great. I know people in Buffalo area are kind of struggling right now with the yes. weather and challenges going on. So my heart goes out to all of the Bills mafia. Even uh, those who are not Bills fans who live in Buffalo are suffering under these conditions. And hopefully uh, people will get dug out soon and, you know, my um, my heart goes out to everybody out there. It's it's tough to watch and follow. Yeah, let's let's talk about that in a minute. For everybody that's joining the show right now, and there's a whole bunch of people jumping in to the live comment section. And for the podcast listeners, the thousands of you that are going to listen to this in podcast form through the week, Thurman Thomas will be joining us. So let's uh, hear from our show sponsor real quick, and then we'll get Thurm right in here. So, every, ladies and gentlemen, the Market Dominator. Hey, I'm John. And I'm Scott. And we are the Market Dominators. As the buyer specialist on our team, I love helping people search for, find, and buy homes. And just like our bills, we put together a great winning strategy to help them succeed in this competitive market. And as the listing agent, it's really important that we educate, advocate, negotiate, and and dominate. dominate. So thank you, John, for giving us the opportunity to sponsor your awesome show, The Off Tackle Show with John Fina, hosted by our good friend Joe Miller. We're so grateful that we get to connect with all of Bill's Mafia through your awesome show. So if you're looking to buy or sell, you reach out to us directly, 716-570-3298. And one other thing for all of our Mafia friends, Merry Christmas and Go Bill's! Go Bills. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are in the market to buy or sell a home, please give the Market Dominator team a call. Uh, 716-570-3298. That American fi- uh, 716. Man, I did it twice. 716-570-3298. Welcome, everybody, into the show. We are Super Chat Live. Please like, subscribe, whatever platform you are on. But I'm not going to waste any more time. Should I waste any more time? No. No. Bring I, bring the legend in. Our, 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 our guest for the show played 12 years with the Buffalo Bills, 13 years total, played in all four Super Bowls, has NFL records that will never be broken. Ladies and gentlemen, number 34, Hall of Famer, Thurman Thomas. Welcome to the show, Thurm. Thank you. How are you guys doing, man? I am doing well. Great. Hey, Merry Christmas, Thurman. I hope uh, you and Patty, the kids are doing great. We're doing well in Tucson, man. It's really good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. And and thanks, John, for that intro about um, the people here in Buffalo. I, I know you care dearly for the people here in Buffalo, and just like every other Buffalo Bills player that have been over and played for the Buffalo Bills, they know how important this community means to us. And uh, thank you for saying that. We appreciate your words. And uh, it, it is sad to see what's going on in Buffalo because you, you think sometimes overall that you're prepared for stuff and, and you're not prepared as much as you think you should be and uh, just keep praying for the people in Buffalo I know I think the count right now is at about 24 or 25 people that we've lost over this storm and I'm sure it's probably going to continue to rise because there's a lot of people that they haven't got to yet so just continue to pray for our emergency responders and and everything that's going on downtown. Yeah, Thurm, how are you holding up? How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're holding up pretty good. You know, I got all my family here. Um, 
all my kids, my grandson. So we're holding up pretty good. Yeah, we lost power for about, ooh, probably about nine hours. Uh, but, you know, it was, uh, we live out in the country in cold, and so we, we lost power for about eight or nine hours, but it came right back on and haven't been out since. So, uh, you know, but since the, the years that I've been living out here, we've never really had a problem. Uh, like that. And I think that's been our longest wait that we've had to wait. So uh, we're, we're good. And uh, hey, and uh, let's time to uh, talk about some Buffalo Bills right now. In- yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Thurman, I couldn't have said it any better than you. And, and probably your nonprofit, your charity will be very busy over the coming weeks. And uh, we'll give you a chance to to plug it and tell people where to go, of course, to help the Buffalo community. Uh, this, this is the part of the show where we just kind of say, hey, you know, what did you expect three days before the game, going in, formulating your thoughts, knowing that weather was going to hit Chicago just as it, it did Buffalo, worse than Buffalo? But what were your thoughts about the game? What were your expectations for the game? Oh, my expectations were very, very high. You were going against a 3-11 and football team. And if you can stop their quarterback, you had a very good chance to win the ball game. And I said it. Uh, last week on uh, Tasker and Chris Brown's show, I, I, I thought that we would have a guy uh, that rushed for over 100 yards. And actually, we could have had two. We should have had two. I mean, when you get to an opportunity, when you get to an opportunity like that, them guys on the, on the side, those coaches have to know what's going on. Because, I mean, there's not a lot of times in a National Football League that you get guys that rush for over 100 yards. It just doesn't happen often. And that was a time where, you know what, if you're really dialed in as a football player and as a coach, you know how many yards James Cook has. You know he only needs two yards to get over 100 yards. So, uh, But it was dominating. It was it was also great to see them uh, use the running game and not use Josh as much as they have in the past. But he's a part of our offense, right? So you're going to have to expect those things. But to have two guys, almost uh, one guy over 100 and another guy, that was uh, really exciting now. I agree. Um, You know, my little twist on it is, you know, you got to beat the three and 10 or three and 11 team. But I I did expect the first quarter just to be a little, I don't know, slow is the right word, but my expectations were we weren't going to see anything happen uh, until the final three quarters of the game. And again, like you, if you can stop their number one and slow their run game, you know, they're, I don't want to say they're weaponless, but you know, (laughs) they're kind of like, I mean, they're on life support uh, <laughs> as a, as an offense, really. Yeah. If you're only got the running game in 2022, you don't really have an offense. I, and that's kind of no, you really- wrapped up for me. Yeah, and for yeah. me, going into this game, for me, the the whole the whole concern that I had, and the only concern I had was the weather, obviously, and that it was shaping up to basically fit to what they did the best, right? Justin Fields, right. David Montgomery, and just minus 25 and we know that josh can throw in this we know that the receivers can catch in this it's not even that it's more about what the defense is going to do be able to do on a team that's going to basically just ground and pound and come right at you but to me the most outside of the fact that we rushed for 254 yards to your point therm you know two two rushers almost at 100 yards one over one almost there but the fact that they kept what was it uh justin fields had seven carries for 11 yards or 16 yards (laughs) i mean that's Yes, right there. Like, give me that all day long, right? We're right, yeah. I mean, and, and most of his damage was done, you know, during the pass game, kind of, in the first drive that they had. Yeah. I mean, it, like you said, had seven carries for 11 yards, but we pretty much shut that down. They went down and scored right on their first possession. So now you're thinking, okay, well, it's going to be this type of day. But you know what, though? I give my hats off to the Buffalo Bills and mm. their coach and their players, you know. They have been through, man, They've been through a lot this year, starting with having to go cancel a home game here to go to to Detroit and play, uh, then play the following Thanksgiving. I mean, these little things have been happening to the Mm -hmm. Buffalo Bills, and they have came through every single time. I can remember a couple of weeks ago when we were the fifth seed and Kansas City and the Miami Dolphins had to lose. And I thought to myself, when that happened, I was like, when has that ever anything ever like that gone right for the Buffalo Bills? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. At that time, I was like, you know what? This this seems to be a little bit different team. How they're built, how they mm. how they're coached, and so and they've carried that number one seat all the way to now. Obviously, 
coming up against a good single Cincinnati Bengals team, but they've been through a lot this year and with the injuries. And uh, yeah, I got to give my head off to Sean McDermott, man. I mean, you know, he probably won't get coach of the year, but this is probably his best job he's done since he's been the head coach of the Buffalo Bills. Oh, the, the injuries alone, just the rotation that we've seen. The, how many faces have we seen in the <laughs> secondary now? A dozen? Yeah. Well, that. And, then, and you... then Von Miller going down. And then even on the offensive line, we've had some injury issues with, and people floating in it, it, it. It's hard to maintain your secondary when you've got that kind of rotation. And on the offensive line, when you've had that much change of position it's kind of hard to get into a groove wouldn't you say but, but that's just the tip of the iceberg i mean it's the, th the three road games in 11 days all the weather <laughs> events that they've had to deal with i mean and what gets lost on so i'm a fan right that's i'm 49 years old therm like you high school and college days was when you guys were in your glory right. to me i don't ever think about the fact or you know i do now but when i was young i didn't think about the fact that you guys had families and like that you had homes to go home to and like kids and all that kind of stuff and then so what they've gone through with the weather event in november and then we got two people seem to forget we got two feet of snow last weekend right if you live in the <laughs> south towns i live in hamburg we got two feet this event they go out a day early right and then it's like no no, no we're going to be back and it if you listen to coach's post game press conference it's almost like he was dropping the news. We, I knew that they weren't going to make it home before Sunday. I knew for a, I, th I think I said it on one of my shows, my, my Rapid Fire Friday show, that there's no way the Bills are coming home. They're not going to be home on Christmas because when you just look at how the storm was set up, what it was going to do, and Coach said it in his post game. Look, we're not going home tonight. We're doing everything we can. We're going to get you home as soon as we as soon as we can get you there. Then to fly to Rochester and bus back to Buff, like they've gone through a lot. It's been a lot. Yeah, we did that. We did that once. Remember Thurman coming home from uh, St. Louis? We had to land in Niagara Falls. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, 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 you know what? It was coming off the victory too, so that made it extra special. I guess yeah. the made it extra special. Yeah, there, there's nothing probably more miserable than losing and having to stay in, you know, <laughs> St. Louis of all places. God, that would be a disaster. Yep. Looks like we might have lost Thurman for a second. Hopefully, what's, uh, what's funny too is I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw the picture, uh, but there's a picture of Josh Allen on Christmas Eve. They, some there's some restaurant or bar in Chicago that opened their doors up to the team. Right. There's a shot of Josh Allen behind the bar. I don't know if he was pouring beers or mixing drinks, but <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys something. I guarantee you, whoever was at that bar with Josh and all the other players. Is one is going to be probably one of the best memories that they ever had before in their lives. Something that no kidding talking about from twenty years. Hey, you remember that time? You know, we beat Chicago. We had to, you know, we had to stay there, but we got in this restaurant and the bar was. I'm sure the guys paid the tab or whatever. You know, Josh alone could have paid the tab, but I guarantee you, you know, things that came up throughout the beginning of the year. You know, beating the Rams and beating Pittsburgh. I, I guarantee you, all those stories were brought up to the fact that where are we right now? Mm. We're sitting in the number one seed, mm. and we got to feel good about ourselves. Uh, we really do. Because that's a night that those guys will remember for the rest of their lives because it was important to them to get the victory. But you know what? To stay there and still be a part of the team is it, something special. Yeah, I have two things that I want to bring up. But the first one is just talking about this team and them finding ways to win. Because we've gone from a team that's relied heavily upon Josh's arm and a defense at the top two, top one, like first place, second, third place defense to a team that's now, even when they hurt themselves, which they did some things in this game uh, yesterday, Saturday to hurt themselves, to put them in a position where they could be in some trouble to basically just finding whatever works and going forward with it and finding ways to win. And that's something that's super impressive um, to me anyway. And I don't know if either of you want to just kind of touch on that real quick. The fact that this team is finding ways to win, which is something that's new, I think, for this squad. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll jump into that real quick. Yeah. So I came off of a really bad college football team my senior year. You know, we were four and seven, and you just felt like you couldn't win a game against anybody good. And then you get to Buffalo, and I got Thurman Thomas and his, you know, cadre around me. And it was, it was just this attitude that we can beat anybody, no matter the circumstances, no matter where we play, what the weather is, we are the guys that, you know, everybody else is gunning for mm -hmm. and we can beat anybody. And there was just like the whole 
the locker room just dripped mm. with this confidence and it's it's a, it's almost uh inebriating you know you're kind of like wow man i'm part of something really big here and i think this team has kind of cobbled it together from huge victories stunning plays to hey no one's better than us in the last 2 minutes of either either half and you know we 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 put together a running game we put together some defense when one side of the ball doesn't do well the other does well and you know that whole kind of swirl that mixture you know lets the guys believe hey we've always got a shot at mm-hmm. winning and I, I i see it the same way you do joe and thurman i'd love to hear what you think oh you know what i'm gonna tell you something if you put on every single game starting from the game against the rams all the way to chicago every single film every single game that we have watched I would definitely say, and even though we have three losses, I would definitely say we were still a better team. Mm-hmm. We were still the better team for sure. That's what you're seeing with this, with this, uh, with this team this year: offense, defense, and special team. They know that they know they know they're good, and they know that they can win any type of way, any type. Yeah. And whether it's on the road, whether it's adverse co- it's conditions, or whatever it may be. They've they've been favored in every single game this year. Yeah. No. So that tells and, and trust me, you don't think those guys know that because they know they're damn good. They're a damn good football team that's going to be reckoned with for you know I, I would say the next three or four years. But I think this year, with going through everything, oh yeah, sky's the limit. Yeah, I had Reed Ferguson on one of my programs uh, a couple weeks ago. Well, it was shortly after their third loss. And even Reed, the long snapper, when I was talking to him just about kind of what they were going through, he's like, "What? we've lost three games with a total of eight points. I know, it's my problem. Really, we don't think there's a problem. And I was like, uh, ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> right, right. I, I, we can pick it apart, right? I mean, we can look at it. I look at the running game. I nitpick a little bit on technique, maybe some of the play calls, like, Thurman, I still don't know what our running identity is. I went down the list today watching the game again, and we ran five to six different style of run plays that just kind of like, I, I, is it an opportunist type theory that we have, or are we still trying to find an identity? And that's a real question. You know, yeah. with you, we knew who we were in the running game. We right. were running, we were running you know, 14, 15, 16, 17, Clio, and we were running 56 and 57. Right, yeah. yeah. But is, is this running game just opportunistic, or are we f- trying to find ourselves? I, I need to know what you think. <laughs> I, I I still think we're trying to find ourselves. Really, I, I mean, I really do think that we're still trying to find. But a great indication of what you can do, and I keep going back to, even though they were three and eleven, is pound the middle. Mm. Give these running backs an opportunity to see their entire. I, I hate it when when Cook and Singletary go outside the tackle. I don't like it. I don't think I don't think that's good. I think you keep it inside the tackles and the tight end and <laughs> let those guys see holes. If you're going to the left and you're running the run option, you can't see back to the right. No, give these guys some vision. I've been saying that since the entire football year. And and let me tell you something. Josh is just as good in the shotgun as he is under the center. Mm-hmm. Same play action, all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I think I think uh, running between the tackles. I think we have to do that more. I mean, you got to man up. This is this is football right here, and this is where you you know you get that number one seed by doing a lot of different things. So I, I've been saying this quite a bit, and this game was the first time I saw a true turnaround in the um, I, I don't know the the attack of Cook and Singletary. Right. I felt like they danced a little too much, and I've contended a little that when you're running the sort of uh, zone read RPO offense from the shotgun as a running back, you're sort of static, yes. you know, in, in the day when, when Jim was under center and he took it, you two were meeting as you were heading to the line of scrimmage and you had so much more momentum and so much, uh, I guess, you know, you, you couldn't be indecisive. You had to hit a hole. And in this game, they really hit the hole. That was one of the things that I, I brought up on a video that Joe might show later. But do you see that same thing? Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely do. Um, yeah. Jim- when, when you said Josh could be under center, that to me said, if I'm the running back, I want to be heading downhill more. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this 
Hey, I didn't, I love these guys are small guys. I mean, Devin Singletary is five six, but he's very, very strong. And you get behind them, some of them offensive linemen, it's hard to see. It's hard to see. So why wouldn't you have your guys going downhill? I mean, James Cook played in the toughest division in college football in the SEC for four years. He's used to contact inside. Yeah, I know with Georgia, they had a lot of weapons or whatever, but if you just give your guys an opportunity to see the whole, whether it's in whole A, B, C, or D, or what have you, give them that opportunity. They, they Those are game-changing plays. I hate when they do some things like, you know, pass on first down, and all of a sudden they come to a, a running play, and they run outside with Isaiah McKenzie. Leave him out the game. Don't, <laughs> don't let Isaiah McKenzie run the football. I, I'm saying, I, I love the guy, and sure – He's had some games where there have been some times where he has broken some outside, and that's something that you see on field. But I got Devin Singletary, a vet, and James Cook, a rookie, who I think will see some greater things, some better things in the future of this guy. But right now, he's turning it on. He's gotten over that rookie slump. Mm, that rookie yeah. slump. He's been challenged, you know, when they signed uh, – what's the guy from – the Colts. Naheem Hines. Naheem Hines. Naheem Hines. When they signed him, you know what? He became a better player. He became a better player. And Sean McDermott called him out and said, hey, I need for him to practice better. And that's what he did. And he has been doing that. That's why his carries and his reps have been going up and up. So I think these guys, they just need to work on their check down. Their check downs are horrible. Mm. Him and Josh cannot connect on a check down. I don't know what it is that's going on there. But it's well, a- we, had, we had a couple of good ones in the game, but uh, yeah, the, check, yeah. the check down over the middle is a struggle right now, it, obviously. It, right? it is. We got a couple of drops and a couple of picks. So I want to move I want to move to one more thing and then we'll go to the good. And obviously the run game we're going to talk about a lot. But to your point, Therm, about Isaiah McKenzie, if anything, there was a time when this Buffalo Bills offense Dable would bring McKenzie in on the jet sweep to effectively kind of put defenses off balance. And you watch what the Dolphins did against the Bills a couple weeks ago where it was just Hill constantly, like, running, streaking across, the like, behind the offensive line to kind of put the Bills' defense on its heels a little bit. I wouldn't mind seeing that more. But, yes, to your point, let's just not give him the football. Like, let's keep giving it to Cook and Singletary. I want to talk about the cold. So yeah. I know the cold is a mindset. Right. So I, I was outside clearing my driveway for two hours today. When I got inside and took off my snow gear, I'm soaked through in sweat. Like, right. My T-shirt, my, my pants that are underneath, like just soaked through. But minus 25, minus 30 wind chill is just different. And Therm, if I'm remembering correctly, back in your guys' day, guys didn't strut around the field with their shirts off to show how tough they were. You didn't wear a shirt underneath because if, if I remember correctly, it affected the way you didn't like the shirt. You wanted your skin on the ball, right? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. how did you, both of you, can talk to this, because you've both played in crazy cold weather games. How yeah. did you prep mindset-wise when you're out there? Like, you just, it's hard to ignore your fingers and your toes being cold, right? Yeah, it really is. I mean, I, you know what? I, I didn't want to be, I, I didn't want to have on too many layers of clo- uh, clothes, especially like in practice. And Marv had us outside a couple of times, you know, throughout the years or whatever. And, you know, I just felt like, you know, I'm going to be in these elements for three hours. I know I'm practicing now and we got the heaters out there. So I'm not going to just like overdress. I'm going to you know, put on one leather, uh, one, one sleeve, maybe, maybe two sleeve, maybe a thick one and a thin one and just go through practicing to try to get the feeling of it. But, you know, come game time, I didn't want none of that stuff on me. I just felt like I could grip the ball a little bit better. Uh, so, you know, that was my mindset. And, you know, being a guy from the South, you know, you would think I would have had on a winter jacket. But, you know what? But but looking at players, like even though Daryl Talley wore his Spider-Man uh, outfit and Bruce was out there with no sleep, I feel like, you know what? Those guys can do it. I can do it. So I'm just kind of like follow the leader. But, you know, come game time, yeah, you don't want any of that stuff on you, really. Yeah, what you do? What you? John, so John was at the Patriots playoff game last year when it was minus seven and tailgated all day, right? So – that's got to be a different get ready for the game hey, than when you're going in. The tailgater mindset is way better than the player. I mean, they're way tougher than we are. I got to tell you, I don't know how they do it. Uh, practice is different from the game, though. You know, you're sitting there in the locker room, and Marv would send us out. But then when we built the field house, you know, Wade Phillips was hilarious. He had a line. He said, uh, yeah, we're practicing indoors because – you know, you just can't practice being miserable. There's no reason to go outside. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. Uh, 
but as far as the, the game goes, like there was like an unwritten kind of deal. Like you're an offensive lineman, you aren't wearing sleeves. Right. Like, okay. And that was it. Yes. But people say, how'd you play in that weather? Thurman, correct me if I'm wrong, but literally you get in after the very first snap, you don't even think about it anymore. Now it may, it may affect some things, but yeah. mentally it's gone. You, yeah. It isn't even there anymore. Yeah, it's gone. I mean, you're, you're out there to trying to win football games. You're not, you're not worried about the, the weather. You know, you come back up the sideline, they put you, put a jacket over you. You sit on the bench for a little while, the heat warmers and stuff, and then you're back out there. Yeah. It's it just, yeah. It, you got to have a great mindset for that. And I think over the years, the players that we had on our football team had a great mindset of, you know what, we're going to be out here for three and a half, four hours. You know what, let's tough it up a little bit. That's yeah, yeah, just yeah. what you do, man. Yep, yep. And do you know what you do when you need a mortgage? You definitely call House Capital when you're looking to buy a home. Everybody's got a guy. You might need work done on your roof. You can call Thurman Thomas. He can help you get it done. Your buddy's got a guy also. You need an inspection. Don't call Joe Miller. He's not even going to leave his house. Too cold out. <laughs> But when you're looking to get your financing together, Brian Belser from House Capital Corporation can be your guy. They help make the mortgage process simple, hassle-free, and understandable. The preferred relationships they have with the top lenders in your area give you the edge up in getting the financing you need. At House Capital with Brian Belser, you get to take it to the house. The house. Oh, give uh, Brian, if you're in the market for a, uh, oh, his number's not up here anywhere, so I can't read it. If you're in the market for a mortgage, give Brian Belser a call. I wonder if I can find it. Do, 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 716-815-21 something. It's behind Thurman. Thurman, oh, Thurman, Thurman. Good, good block, Thurman. Good. <laughs> there it is. Thurman coming in strong, just like when he was playing days. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I got to tell you something right now. All right. About Thurman Thomas. Uh, this guy that you're looking at right now was the most savage mm. pass blocker of mm. any running back I've ever seen. Like, you know, there are times when you look at like tight ends, a running back, when it comes to pass pro or even run block, and you're like, oh, God, no way. But, man, we never had a doubt. Thurman, I have to say, you were a beast when it mm. came to protecting and if, if linebackers came flying up in the line, they were going to get a mouthful of Thurman Thomas. That's for damn sure. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, you know, if, if my part was I always wanted to be an all-around guy, right, an all-around football player. So if that had me staying out on the football field and picking up blitzes and doing things like that, I had to do it right. So, um, so what I really loved about training camp is that, you know, when I got there in 1988, you know, they had Cornelius Bennett. They had Shane Collins. They had Daryl Talley. You know what? I would go against those guys. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, they're there. You might as well try it, right? You know what? So, and, you know, there were some battles. I won some. I lost some. But mm. going up against Cornelius, Daryl, and Shane Collins, and I was ready Oof. for anybody that would blitz, especially a guy from the secondary. Now, yeah, but so, yeah, I, I really loved it, and I really – it was part of the game. And uh, my uh, my former coach, Elijah Pitts, always said, you know what, like before we went out, because we really only went here, like three running backs. It was me, Caldwell Gardner, and Kenny Davis. I mean, and Cotton. And yeah. Cotton, that was it. And we were always say before we left and went out, don't let any of your guys that are blitzing hit the quarterback. Mm. So we knew right from the beginning, that was going to be our job. And uh, I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, being a part of that, uh, being a part of that game. Oh, I got I got to, I got to tell you a Thurman Thomas story, Joe Miller. I don't know. It's, if it's, it's as good as the Carwell Gardner story <laughs> that we've changed to the, the, the sea gun. And then like one or two series in Jim was like, we're done with this. Get off the, get out of the huddle, Carwell, get out of the huddle. Is <laughs> no, it, no. Is that one? <laughs> so I, I I don't even know what game it is, right? But everybody, you know, if you're playing defense against the Buffalo Bills, you're looking at Thurman Thomas, right? Yep. Because, you know, uh, 16 games, he's usually got 11 or 12 with 100 yards. So you're keying on Thurman. So we're Thurman. So we're back there. I don't know. It's like third and six or something. And Thurman's lined up, and he's just like doing this. He's like looking out over the defense, and they're all staring at him. And 
and the ball snapped. They're still looking at Thurman. Jim drops back and throws it out in the flat. Everybody's frozen. You can see it on film. <laughs> We're watching film the next day. We're like, what the hell is Thurman doing? And he's like, count, like he's counting. And they're all focused on him. The ball gets snapped out into space. <laughs> Dude, it was so it was awesome. I was just, I was just, I was just trying to figure out what man I had to block. Yeah, I know, I know, but <laughs> but you were like doing it like this while the snap was going on. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was Will Mac Sam. Yeah, it was all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Exactly, man. That's what they. Uh, that's what you got to do. Well, let's transition to the good, and we've talked a lot about the run game already. Before we break down the one play that we have that was the James Cook touchdown, just real quick, why don't you guys touch on outside of maybe the run or what else you saw inside the run, just the stuff that you thought from this game that the Bills did really, really well at? Either side of the ball, Thurman, either yeah. side of the ball. Yeah, I, I thought that I thought the offense really do. I, I thought they attacked. Um, but I do have to give it off to the defensive linemen. I thought they did an excellent job after that first series. I tell you what, Ed Oliver has came, come to play this year. He has really done an outstanding job. It, it, we're doing all this stuff, and we haven't had a healthy rotation, as you were, as you might call, on the defensive line. Uh, obviously, we won't have that same rotation with Von Miller being out, but I think the strength of this football team is, is their D-line. Even with missing Von Miller, I think those guys have been great up front. They've, you know, it just hasn't been one guy. But um, the offensive line is getting there. Uh, they're getting there. And when you have a guy like Josh Allen, obviously you're not going to have as many running plays as you possibly going to have. And uh, but I, I think both of those guys, both of the offensive line and the defensive line, have been playing excellent ball all year long. So I mean, that's good, and I like it. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I, I'm going to say though, uh, the the run defense was fantastic, and yeah. the spy. If you caught it, there was a little bit of spy. We worked a little bit of regular in, uh, mostly nickel, and a lot of tipped passes, which is fantastic. And this Kingsley Jonathan, you know, just mm -hmm. kind of showing up and playing, uh, really inspired football. Matt Milano, I think, you know, I, I, I caught another play where I thought, oh, maybe his, you know, he's not kind of full on the knee or ankle or whatever it is. But by and large, the front seven was fantastic. And I love it when you stop the run. Conversely, my favorite thing in the good category, it's not when you have rushing touchdowns, but when you have a 20-plus yard rushing touchdown. As yeah. an offensive lineman, like when we used to see Thurman's jersey going, getting smaller, the number getting smaller and smaller and smaller from our vantage point and scoring the touchdown, that that just like crushes defenses. I loved it. I loved seeing those. It was yeah. it was amazing to me, sidebar. So as a fan sitting there watching the game, and when the announcer said Kingsley Jonathan, I was like, clearly he's got his name backwards, right? <laughs> clearly. <laughs> clearly he's got his name backwards. And then he kept saying, I was like, oh, nope, that's his name, Kingsley Jonathan. All right. <laughs> so. I, think, I think we were saying the same thing at home. <laughs> he had to go backwards. <laughs> but uh, the D line. Hey, if, if it's backwards and it's working, right. don't yeah. mess with it, baby. <laughs> But yeah, the, to, to your guys' point, the D-line, I mean, Ed Oliver has come to play, and you just can't speak enough about this defensive line. Daquan Jones and what Tim Settle has done, obviously Jordan Phillips being on this roster again, and even Shaq Lawson coming back and keeping Tremaine Edmonds clean. Now, Milano has always had that ability to, to sneak those holes and sneak those gaps to find plays in the backfield because clearly – the offensive line, they were focusing on Tremaine and now Tremaine is clean and just to see yeah. him roam and attack, it's just, it's some, it's, it's going to put the bills in a predicament. I can't see sidebar. I can't see the bills letting this kid walk. Thurm, what are your thoughts on Tremaine? I've always, I've always loved him. And, and you can say from a 19 or a 20 year old coming here and you were put in that position from day one. From day one, he has been the starter for the last four or five years. I think it's four years or maybe five. I, I don't know which one it is, but he is five years. He's been that starter. So, and people have always said, well, he doesn't make the big play. When he hasn't made the big play, we haven't had the guys up front. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, if you want to ask anybody, you ask a guy like Cornelius Bennett, who had who moved to outside linebacker to inside linebacker and had Ted Washington in front of him, he said that was probably the best move in my entire life 
even though I was moving inside, Ted Washington took care of two or three guys every single time. Mm. So you have Ed Oliver and Settles handling those guys up front. Yep. It makes for Tremaine Johnson, Edmonds, to run all over the football field. And he's done exactly that all year long. Yep. I, I agree. I mean, you know, people can say what they want about the numbers <laughs> or what have you. But I think when you have Jones, Settle, and Phillips healthy and Ed Oliver, obviously. I'll tell you what, though, uh, Thurman, I, I like the idea of of Jones and Settle or Jones and Phillips and put Ed Oliver on one of the ends every now and again to mess with those tackles because him coming up underneath, you know, kind of a shorter guy coming up under the chin of tackles. I just love to see them flirt with that a little bit more. I I think he played defensive in this game, didn't he? A little bit, right? He he got out in space in a different game. I didn't catch him at defensive end. It was mostly uh, Shaq Epinesa and uh, Kingsley. Yeah. I think I got to play in against the Chicago bears, Jonathan. that he uh, that he played defensive end. <laughs> I I'm think calling so. him by his first name, <laughs> Kingsley Jonathan. <laughs> I think Kingsley's a cool name, man. It is a cool name. It is a totally cool name. I say one other thing too. You know, we're ten and no when Jordan Poirier plays. Talk about it. <laughs> we, <laughs> I'm all about. You know, I know. You know what? You have these windows where your team has to be good, great, or whatever, and then it comes the hard part where you're having to to try to re-sign these guys. And you, you talk about Tremaine. You also talk about Jordan Porter. But I, I think he's been just as important as anybody on this football team when Sean McDermott got here. Him and Micah Hyde, when those two got, guys got here, they solidified the secondary. And then when it got Trey White and who was the other guy for a long time, Levi Wallace. And mm-hmm. I thought that secondary was great. Um uh, it may not put up the numbers like other secondaries, but as far as like not letting the big play, Micah Hyde and Jordan Poirier are probably the most two most important players outside of Josh Allen and Steph Diggs that have turned this franchise around because they don't they do not get beat deep and up and they support the run. Oh uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more. That was so well said. I mean, you 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 crystallized what I've been trying to say about Poirier and Hyde for yeah. the longest time. And it, it's so, it's very clear when Poyer is in the game, there is a different uh, I don't know aggressiveness to the secondary. They they just he exudes a confidence. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it might be a little bit like that time when you came into the huddle and got up right in my face <laughs> and screamed obscenities at me. And reduced me to like this big, and said, "If hey, you want me to put a seventy jersey on and do it for you." <laughs> but here, here's why I, hey, Joe Miller, I'll tell you, here's why. Right now, I have said it from day one, and I probably every guy who played in with Thurman will say the same thing. I would lay down in traffic for that guy because. <laughs> He would. He called me out. He called Parker out. He called Ostrowski out. And then when he laid an egg, he went right up to me and said, "My turn. Give it no. back. <laughs> Give it right back to me, man." And I was like, "Damn, that's pretty good." He's not one of those guys. You screwed up. I'm the. I'm the best ever, right? So, I love that. About. I tell that story all the time, Thurman. Yeah, I, I all the time. I'm not going to lie. I had my faults, too. There were some games where I wish I had, uh, you know, didn't fumble the ball or, or drop a reception or whatever. You know what? And I was I was always waiting on it. I always waiting on it for guys to get on my case about it. And, and I understood it because, you know, I, I wanted to see those guys do well. You know, I, I hated anybody to do something bad, you know. But I think as a football player and as a leader on your football team, sometimes you have to challenge people. Sometimes yeah. You have to challenge people. And, you That's know, right. I was a part of the running game. If that running game wasn't going, man, I was going like, what the heck is going on? Something needs to be fixed around here. You know, right. we're too good of an offensive line to be getting thrown around by, you know, uh, the Patriots or whoever it may be, you know? So uh, I knew what the type, I knew the type of guys that I had. I, and I knew they cared about the game. I knew they cared about winning, but you know, sometimes you got to edge, you got to poke them a little bit. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, though. I wanted to grab you by the neck and strangle you until I choked you out. Not to death, man, just to put you asleep for a little while. Before we get to the run play that we have to kind of break down a little bit, where did the nickname Squatty come from? 
Thurman, because that Fina calls you that all the time, even in text messages to me, Squatty's on the show. Like, where did it come from and who gave it to you? Well, I, I know Daryl gave it to me. I mean, if you got a nickname, it's probably coming from Daryl anyway. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Fair, fair. fair. Well, and, uh, probably, probably because he couldn't remember your name. Right, exactly. When you were a rookie, right? He was like, "Who's that squat little running back we got?" It, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, it, that was basically it, yeah. Because I was kind of short to the ground, and he called me squatty. I mean, he was six four, and I was five nine, so I was a little squat to him. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. that to me. He's like, I, I think it's because he's short, and I was like, he's got three inches on Singletary. <laughs> well, I don't know what they could possibly call Singletary then. <laughs> I mean, nothing PC anyway. Right, right, yeah. So we, we've got to run, play to break down. And to your point, Thurman, earlier, they're still trying to find their way. And I think, and it was funny because uh, the, the broadcast team broke out in this game. They broke out just the center, Bates, leaking a lot and kind of getting to that second level, which is kind of something we haven't seen. Clearly, this is an offensive line that has gone back and forth for the last couple of years between some somewhat of a zone or a wide zone to a to a pin and pull and trying to figure it out. But the, the play that we want to look at is is the James Cook touchdown run. And John, I don't know. I know you sent this to me, so I don't know if you want to set this up real quick. So I looked at this, Thurman, just so you know, my the way I've been looking at it, we do so much of this like zone read or shotgun run. And I, I've just found that it makes the running backs indecisive because they see too much. And what I've been noticing about Cook in the last two games and Singletary trying to get to is just making one decision and heading to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And Saffold, on this particular play, comes over and takes the one technique. And I, I thought it was important because Cook had the chance to dance, and he just didn't. He just right. said, I'm fine. I'm looking at Saffold's ass, but I'm going to pick a side and I'm just going to go. And th- that's why, that's why I chose this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see that happening. And, and you're, you're, you're very much correct too. Uh, because if you notice over the past couple of games, Cooks has had some lanes to where he's getting a line of scrimmage and he falls down. Mm-hmm. There's been a couple of plays like that in the last couple of games, uh, not this game particularly, but two games before where I think he was just thinking too much. You know what? You put that foot into the ground, you plant and you go, you don't no. dance. This is not, this is not high school. You know, this is a pro. I mean, the only guy that can dance was Barry Sanders. That's the only guy that could ever dance. Okay. James Cook. I, I, I love you brother, but you're not Barry Sanders. Okay. <laughs> he is the only guy that can do that. And I, I think now, uh, with this game, you know what? They can go back and look at this a lot on tape, you know, what? and see the angles that he has, you know, running the football and putting his foot down in the, in the dirt and going forward. So, yeah, he's – I think he's a north-south uh, runner, not mm. an east-west runner. Uh, you know, he's big enough to take the punishment coming out of the SEC. So, I, I think you'll see more and more of these plays. I've been, saying, it- the, I've been saying the same thing, Thurman. Clean up the formation. Don't give him too much to look at. Yep. And then right here, like Saffold is even with the guy. He doesn't get any drive. He's shuffling his hips over onto the defensive tackle. It's every opportunity for this to be a, a, a cook, dance in the hole, slow yourself down. He could have gone either way on this. He chose the right yeah. side. But the, the but the point is he just chose, lowered yeah. his pads, and accelerated. Yeah, he, he, he's done an excellent job. You know, I've been talking to him and Devin pretty much weekly, you know, going into every football game, going into, you know, every game that they've been playing in this year. And, uh, hey, you know what? I tell them some pointers every now and then. You know what? Just relax a little bit. It'll come to you. And I like with this formation here. You look at the wide receivers. You got one over to the left side. You got two that are stacked at the top. Mm-hmm. So that's really going to spread this offense out. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. So th- yeah. there could be whole Like this one guy over here uh, right in front of Knox right here. Uh, Chicago Bear. I wouldn't. Yeah, even, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't even count him as a guy. Wouldn't yeah, because he's outside the box. He's flat-footed, right? Counter. You worry about those four inside. I mean, that's just it's perfectly drawn play. Yeah, and yeah. like, at, and like, at, Eli, and Eli, really, you're winning here with six against seven, too, Thurman. Yeah, absolutely. And like Eli used to tell us, you know what? If we're going to have a big play, you're going to have to make one guy miss you. You're going to have to make one guy. Got to make one miss, yeah. baby. One so, miss. You make one miss you, you know what? You're probably going to have a long run. That's so right. there was a, so we we had Zach Boss in this offense for a long time, and this is one of those plays where Zach and I love Zach. I know Zach on a personal level, yeah. 
but he would a lot of times run into the back of his offensive lineman and he wouldn't be decisive like yeah. James Cook is starting to show. Um, Thurman, can you speak to that whole situation where everything just kind of slows down and it's all and it goes from being because like when things are sped up and you're nervous, like you get tunnel vision big time, right? Your yeah. peripheral's gone, you can't you kind of can't feel, but when it slows down and you get comfortable, all of a sudden. When you're seeing daylight and you run to it, it just is there. Can you speak to that as a running back, just how that kind of happens to you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, your eyes get wide open. You think you can score from there. I mean, it's it's, it's probably one of the better feelings in the National Football League when you're running the football to see just a gaping hole. Because, right. Because you don't see them that often. You <laughs> just don't see them that often. And when you do, you take advantage of it. And uh, I think with this offensive line coming together and – James Cook, and I'll keep saying it over and over again, him and De Devin Singletary are a nice compliment to to each other. They, they complement each other very, very well. And uh, I, I would love to see more of James Cook, but I think Devin Singletary is having a hell of a year too. Yes. I, do. I think both of these guys are. Now, you're going to have to come to the point, Devin's a free agent this coming up year. And you just – Use your second round pick on Cook. So there's a decision. I would love for those guys to stay together. Uh, I think they, like I said, they complement each other very, very well. It, it's so hard now as a fan, Thurman. Mm. Like when we were players, guys would just kind of come and go, and you're like, that's the way it is, you know. But then as a fan, I start gravitating and like liking these guys. You know, you follow them on social media and you start to like them, and then they they disappear, you know, it's, it's a hard deal as a player. You were like, I don't know. He was here yesterday. He's gone today. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't even know his name anymore. <laughs> but so, so then it should be, she, if Devin goes to another team, should I still text him and talk about things? That he could do? Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh my God. That is hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. I'm That's dying. Funny. Uh, I think we got a Q42 read from uh, John before we move on to the things that need, maybe potentially need work. Oh, I got, I got some work for you, Joe. I got some work. I got to tell you, I killed it this weekend grilling. Oh, man. And I got a, I love Maiden Buffalo from the 42nd parallel crafted with Western New York ingredients. You've got to try Q42's award winning sauces and rubs. A big holiday thanks to our listeners of the show who ordered for Christmas, but it's not too late. Through the rest of this year, not many days left. Save 30% or 30% when you go to QUE42BBQ.com. And with Fortitude, type in the coupon code, all capital letters, FINA Show. FINA Show. And by the way, Thurman, a message from Q42's creator. Uh, he misses seeing the tweets from Chompy the Goat. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back Chompy the Goat. I don't even know what it means. Is it code? I don't know. But and maybe Chompy the Goat ended up with Q42 rubbed all over him, and he got roasted uh, like they do down in Mexico. I used to have a goat named Chompy. I got it as a present from Daryl Talley. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I, live, Bro. I, live, I live in a country, and we, we named him Chompy, but we had to give him back. I was just saying the other day, you do not give live animals as gifts. That's no, <laughs> you're up there. You're up there in Colden, and uh, two of my best friends in the world, Alice and Rich Clarkson, live in Colden, and they they are goat farmers. They have like a farm with goats on it up in Colden. So yeah, oh, go. Hey, I love goat meat. I and what's crazy? You. What's crazier about the fact that you live in Colden and they do too is the fact that this winter so far, Hamburg has gotten probably ten times the snow that you you guys have gotten. <laughs> we are getting pummeled. Bro, I've gotten like five feet in the last two days. It's nuts. And we're going to get another foot tonight. I digress. So, I don't even know where Colden is. I, I've never been that far south. <laughs> Except when I went to Joe's house, which is like in Ohio. All you need to know is that the word cold is in the name of the town. That's all you need to know. It's always colder there for some reason. I don't yeah. Know yeah. I'm, and I'll tell you how I am. I'm only like seven minutes from Kissing Bridge. Oh. <laughs> what? There you go. Holy crap. I'm... <laughs> You got an open bedroom. I know the the grandson is there, but I might be crashing to your place. Maybe I'll come out for uh, what is that? Uh, the German holiday they do down there, and that must be right around the corner from you, right? Absolutely. What are, what, what town is that? Colden. No, no, no. Where, where they do the uh, beer thing? Oktoberfest. Um, Eden. 
Eden. No, it's not in Eden. No, Eden is Cornfest. Cornfest. Uh, where's Oktoberfest? Anyway, we digress. We Germany? got a couple, we got a yeah, but they do one in Buffalo. It's so far away from you, Joe. You don't even know. We got a super right. chat that is covering up Dermot Thomas. So I'm going to read it as fast as I can from John DeFazio. John, thank you for being a part of the show. Two points that really stood out to me last game. One, inside zone better schemed as, as opposed to outside zone, and the backs number two are running inside zone better at reading holes. On the flip scheme, digs is on the flip scheme digs better. So I don't know what he meant necessarily there, but uh, do either of you would you, either of you like to speak to that real quick? Mm, I don't know. Does, is he trying to say the running game makes digs better? I, I don't know. Um, I, I think that's true. I mean, big running game always helps the uh, the passing game. I'll say this though, so addressing it very quickly, we didn't run a lot of zone. We ran more draw. Yeah. I mean, we ran a lot of draw in this game. We even had Thurman a, a strong toss with zone blocking. Ellicottville. Thanks, Pamela. I mean, <laughs> and that's what I was doing. I started uh, starring all the different types of runs we ran. Right. We ran five different style of runs. So I, I don't even know anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even I don't, know. I don't know what to expect. It, me neither. Yeah. Uh, well, we're running short on time. We're getting close because we we promised Thurman we'd get him out of here as promptly as possible. So when we look at this game and just the things that we probably need to work on a little bit, for me, I'm going to go first. And one of those things is, and the Bills did this for a while. In 2020, in 2020 2021, there was a very much kind of a, a makeup of this defense where they were almost kind of waiting to see what you were going to do against us on the first drive. And teams would kind of have a tendency to come down the field and score on us. And then they'd be like, oh, okay, got it. And then they would close it in, right? They'd basically shut you down from there. And then we went on like this. I don't remember what the number was. It was, it was either 12 or 14 game tear where we did not allow a single point on the first drive for the opponent in a game. And then all of a sudden it switched again. Right. So for me, and, and Jordan Poyer actually in his post game presser said he felt like the guys were a little bit unsettled, that they needed to settle in a little bit. So I don't know if that's the whole just being too amped up, being too hyped, and just missing the run fits or whatever. But thoughts on just kind of like where this defense is at on that first drive of the game because it feels – and I'm not – I don't necessarily have a problem with it because if they're going to basically shut you down after drive one, give them three points or seven points. I don't care. But you you, you just want to see, as a fan, you want to see them be like, you know, three and out, you're done. Like, get off the field. <laughs> yeah. Right? I, I think we all want to see that, but you know it's the unknown. I mean, how is how is just? I mean, Justin feels a hell of an athlete. Oh my gosh! You know what I'm saying? So you really maybe have to go through that first drive of maybe trying something different because I mean, I think you have to because you may have Plan A and they may do Plan B, and so you have to revise that on your second drive. So I think it's the unknown. I think we've seen it a couple of times where. Teams that went down and scored or got a field goal or whatever it may have been. But uh, but I tell you what, man, <laughs> having Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier over there, they figure stuff out very, very mm. quickly. Very, very quickly. And, and I think that's what was – because you look at the Chicago Bears, were they going to keep Taron Johnson out there and, and run the nickel package or were they going to bring A.J. Klein in? to have the three linebackers to try to stop Justin Fields. So they were kind of caught in, in the middle. But I think overall, after the first drive, they did an excellent job. Yeah, and they did. That was a big conversation going in. I think you were asked. You were asked on One Bills Live by Tasker and Brownie yeah. what you felt they were going to do. Were they going to go to more of a tra traditional base 4-3? And yeah. I've been kind of pounding that table with FINA, just that like when they're up against one of these guys – that can run, you want to move to a bigger linebacker versus a big nickel. And they went back and forth. They kind of like were mix and match. They didn't commit to either in this game. But yeah, he, he I don't know. I, mean, I, already. I, I, I disagree with both of you a little of bit. Of course. I mean, no kidding. I mean, first of all, I, I think McDermott is a, an amazing head coach. I think Leslie Frazier is very, very good. I want him to do better on the t against the teams that we need to, you know, like it's a three and eleven Bears team, man. I, I when I saw them score in the first drive with a nice balanced attack, I was like, "That's okay." Uh, they they, did, they didn't even look like they had will in the <laughs> beginning of the third quarter. I mean, they wanted to hang it up, and that I get that. But by and large, I, you know, this fight between regular and nickel, Taron Johnson. I think I wrote his name down in my notes like six, seven times. 
uh, you 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 go to AJ Klein, who's a good football player, but he's going to be outfooted. I, I don't know why you you choose a, you know AJ Klein over Taron Johnson, and I like AJ. Uh, I, I just to me they run the defense pretty damn well, and the the. the I guess the foil I bring to my own argument is sometimes those guys score too, man. I mean, they got a pulse, right? I mean, we can't expect everybody to go freaking goose eggs against us. And I know you don't, but whether they score on the first drive or the first drive of the third quarter, the other team's going to score. It's not about it's not about whether or not they're going to score. It's about when the Indianapolis Colts and Jonathan Taylor, and we've talked about this, come in and they and, and they put up 265 yards on us. Yeah. And then when Leslie Frazier is asked, he says, I never considered moving out of the nickel four, two at all. Right. We're just going to, so you're just going to let them continue to yeah. go downhill at you. Oh, you got to let that go. <laughs> I know. You gotta I got to let that go, Joe. <laughs> Tell him, Thurman. Tell him, short, you need short-term memory loss, Joe Miller. <laughs> You'd have never survived as a player if you keep harboring this, yeah. man. You got to like close your eyes and remember the good stuff because we all have enough shitty plays to drag us down into that, you know, right. the, the toilet bowl of hell. What were you yeah. saying, Thurman? He wouldn't have last very long. He wouldn't have last long at all, right? Yeah. Hell no. He, last long. he ain't yeah. got a big enough puffed up chest. Uh, but hey, to answer yeah. your question about the work, this special teams needs to mm. just stop, stop hurting us. Stop taking penalties. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? And they've been really solid over the past couple of years, but it just seems like this year is like something may be off. Something may be off with the special teams. But uh, you know what? Eventually, I think they'll make a play. I, I, I mean, I real. I think they're they're going to do some things here when they need to. I do. <laughs> it's going to like like right when we're in the playoffs, we don't expect anything from punt return, kickoff return, and bam, something will hit. Yeah. I'm just I'm just hoping for one of those without a penalty flag. You're right. Yeah. So yeah, I said low expectations for let, let, special teams. Let's wrap this show up and uh, finish it up with the Buffalo Bills are going into Cincinnati, and it's going to be 57, I think, here on Sunday and Monday, which is absolutely insane when you consider what we've been through over the last four days and wow. uh, the blizzard that has been, which means that weather's probably not going to be a factor in Cincinnati. you got to figure it's going to be between 55 and 65 Monday night for Monday night football. At the end of the day, the number one seed is on the line. If the Bills beat the Bengals – they pretty much clinch the number one seed. Obviously, they have to beat the Patriots the next week. If they lose to the Bengals, everything is up in the air. If the Chiefs lose, the Bengals clinch. If 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 the Chiefs win, the Chiefs are number one seed. So just looking into your crystal ball, if you will, going into next week, next week's Monday night game, the first time Josh Allen has played against Joe Burrow in Cincinnati, the Bills are a good road team, in my opinion. What are you, you two, what are your both of your expectations kind of going into this football game? I'll give mine first. The playoffs are starting next Monday. Right. <laughs> the playoffs are starting next Monday. Yep. And, and if guys don't look at it that way, then you're not looking at the big picture. You're not looking at the big picture. And obviously things would have to go well or whatever, but we got New England on that last. Hey, Cincinnati has the Baltimore Ravens uh, the last game of the season, I think, too. <laughs> I mean, now you look at Kansas City. They got Denver and Seattle. So it's at Seattle though, isn't it? Uh they have no, it's Denver, at Denver, home, Denver and Ravens. Home home Denver at Raven or at, home Denver at Raiders. Sorry. Raiders, yeah. At Raiders, right, right, right. Ooh. Yeah. So hey, look, this, this this is where the playoff starts Monday night right. for Buffalo yeah. Bills. That's all it that's the mindset that I, I want to get this number one seed because I know if I get this number one seed, I have the best chance to go to the Super Bowl. We've been the favorite in every single game this year. Don't stop now. Mm. Don't stop now. This is where the playoffs begin. New England, you play New England and see what happens. Hopefully you'll get that bye, and that'll be settled. But the playoffs start, they start Monday uh, against the Cincinnati Bengals, who I think is, I think it was a hell of a football team. Oh, yeah. I, I think if, I think with Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Joe Burrow, I think those are the top three guys probably in, in the AMC, but I'm talking top five and probably the entire NFL. Those three guys are that good for their football team. And you think about Cincinnati. I mean, they haven't had Joe Mixon in a couple of games. They didn't have Jamar Chase. And Joe Burrow has still led them to victory. The mm. defense is playing better. So, you know, if there's a team that scares me this year, it's probably the Cincinnati Bengals. But I think we'll be ready for them. Okay. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. 
I'll just add the key to the game is going to get Burrow off the spot. Yeah. Uh, the, front, the front four have got to move. I don't think they're going to bring a lot of pressure, but I think the front four have got to win. Mm. They've got to move him off that eight yard spot. Yeah. Uh, and look, I, as much as I'd love to say we could get some help from, uh, from other people, that's not the attitude, right? Thurman, Ooh. you know, like you're holding your destiny right here. Like, you know, you got it. Just went out, just, just went out. Believe you can do it and go do yeah. it. Yeah. I, those guys believe that too. I yeah. really, it's going to be fun. So we're going to, we're, I would expect us to see a lot of them letting them run the ball if they want to, to wholly sell out to basically stop Joe Burrow, right, in this passing game. Uh, so there's probably going to be some seven-yard runs, some 10-yard runs, and some 12-yard runs that we're going to be, like, pounding our fists at. But at the end of the day, if they can if they can find a way to get him off the spot, Burrow, and contain him, the good news is, is there's film out there. Teams have slowed them down, including this past weekend. The, the New England Patriots this past weekend looked like a clown car, a clown show against them in the first half, couldn't do anything, and then worked their way back into the game and made it a game at the end and then did what the Patriots that, – that's the biggest – that's the most unbelievable situation right now ever is that that franchise that was so perfect like and did everything right for so long is finding and inventing ways to lose football games. It's we, we, and, and, and we are enjoying it, Thurman, aren't we? Yeah. The hell with them. <laughs> <laughs> better said. Yeah, you said it better than I could. I said we're enjoying it. You said the hell with them. I love it. Thurman, <laughs> Thurman, you have been a peach, and this has been a blast. I appreciate you so much. We appreciate you for being a part of the show. Tell us, if you will, just to – oh, John's got something. No, no, tell us. Finish your thought because I want to hear it. I was just—I just wanted to what you started the show with, just what you've got going on, yes. and and over and, and over Thurman's left shoulder. I think that's an original, Patty Thomas, if I'm not mistaken. Oh God, right oh. shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Check out check out Patty's artwork. She's uh she's awesome. Yeah, I, she, I love it. But um, let's she, hear about. Go ahead. Go ahead, she, Thurman. Uh, she goes by the name of the Ghost uh, on Instagram and um twitter uh but she just started that two years ago have done a phenomenal job uh she's been at some shows in art basil down in miami she's been at to uh Birchfield penny here in uh buffalo and uh so yeah she's you know she's found her niche she's found her her new life you know and uh she's done a tremendous job and you know and for us i go john you know it's the thurman thomas family foundation you know we started that foundation but five or six years ago, we contribute to scholarships for Erie Community College. Uh, we give scholarships down there to at least five students uh, per year. And um, it's a great foundation. And also, you know, we're helping with the 514 uh, tops uh, tragedy that happened here, too. So uh, we do a lot around the city, but we love it. Absolutely love it. Hey, hey, Thurman, I got a quick question for you. How do you give on Venmo? Ooh. That's a good question, uh, and I don't have the answer for it. Sorry. All right. Well, text me later, and then I'll put yeah. it up there. But Patty, um, and family, Patty and the kids usually go through all this stuff. Okay. That's awesome. And Thurman, personally, I think you're doing some uh, tenant improvements, some construction type of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my construction company, 34 Group, yeah, we, uh, along with Gilbane and Turner, uh, you know, we got the winning bid on the new Bill Stadium that was started up here in March. Uh mm -hmm. Up. It is a three-year project, and uh, so I'll at least be in here in Buffalo for the next three years trying to complete that. And uh, so, yeah, but I told Sean McDermott, say, the one thing I would love to do to open this stadium, I would love to have a Super Bowl trophy open up the new stadium and in, in, in what Bill's right. I just got to chill. Same. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying, uh, and you know what? We'll build that Hall of Fame at the entry right there with uh, pictures of you and Daryl and Thurman and Jim and everybody, man. I mean, it'll right. be uh, it'll be amazing. Uh, Thurman, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And you know, I I hold you in the highest regard. Uh, I love your family. Congratulations on the birth of your grandson. You and I know you've got the the three daughters and Thurman the the third or the fourth or the fifth. I mean, <laughs> you you really are a um, you know you're a great inspiration for all of us players and all of us bills mafia and you know i um i really appreciate you coming on man all right man appreciate you love you guys and uh go bills go bills go bills ladies and gentlemen you've been tuned into the off tackle with john feed show brought to you by the market dominator team on the buffalo rumblings vidcast network presented by picasso 
Picasso's Pizza. Sorry about that. Appreciate everybody. Uh, yeah, so coming up, don't uh, turn your dial away. Buffalo Late Night is coming up on the Buffalo Rumblings channel. But for me, for John Fina, for Thurman Thomas, and uh, all of Buffalo, Buffalo Rumblings, go Bills. <laughs>